Yasta, back already. I, I found Milos. So quickly, where are they? Tell me what's going on. Yasta, you have to tell. <sighs> Calm down. I'll tell you everything. Maybe you should sit. Come on, talk to me. I don't want to sit down. The cloud got to them. Not far from here. We have to get them out of there. Help them. Rahitra, you wanted me to speak. So hear me out. It happened a very long time ago. They're all dead. Nobody came for them. I don't think there's anyone alive there anymore. On Condor or anywhere else. What are you talking about? Every night. You forget about the events that happened after the clouds attack. I may be forgetting things. You've already proven that to me, but I, I can't have forgotten that much. You've been in this condition for a very long time. How, how long? How long have I been like this? 428 days. At least that's how many times you've broadcast your morning message to Milos. What the fuck? No! That's impossible! Uh, I'm sorry to bring such news. Doctor. But I want to help. You don't have to wait any longer. Hate to interrupt, but we have a problem. The cloud is coming. Right now? Yes. It's closing in on you. Hurry us. Copy that. Is that one of yours? What does he want? It's our astrogator. He's warning us of the approaching cloud. Quick, get us to the hideout. Now, move! Can he get through the force field? Hey, hey! What are you trying to do? I'm done waiting. There's no need to anymore. There's no one left to look for. All that's left is revenge. Astrogator, I think he wants to fight. What for? Can't you stop him somehow? He'll cause trouble for both of you. I don't think so. He's already opened the field. I see. We can't beat him, Jordan. You have a much better chance of surviving if you stick together. Hey, Yasna! What's this? Are you familiar with the energy transformation of Dirac emitters? Uh, uh... Thought so. The emitter's energy system is the Here, take it. You can help. By shooting. I'll take care of maintaining the force field. When you aim, wait for the green light. Then you can take the shot. The device is connected to three combat machines. Okay. It sounds simple. Check, check. Hey, over. Let's stay in touch. Copy that. It's getting closer. I don't see it. Soon it'll be within range of the guns. It's coming from the east, over the hill. Affirmative. I see it.
What should I do? Come on! Tell me where to shoot! That's not so easy, there's too many! Just shoot them! Keep shrinking. Do something about it, will you? Rahitra, are you there? What's going on with you? Fuck! Touch, yeah? <laughs> Good one. You could warn me before you fuck her off someplace. Where are you? enormous pressures and temperatures. Due to the interference of the force field, it floats several feet above the ground. So it doesn't depend on the surface. In addition to the Dirac's force field, it has an antimatter spherical blaster, and it has the most advanced electronic brain at our disposal. Defeat is not an option. You're right. This madness needs to stop. If there's anything that can defeat the cloud. It will, definitely. We used to say that to send the Cyclops somewhere is like giving the task to the devil himself. Look, I'm giving you a simple choice, Yasna. Are you going or not? Go where there could be water, medicine, resources, or stay here to die. Wow, such a hard choice. I hope I won't regret it. Too bad you didn't mention earlier that you had a working saucer. We could fly to Condor right away. Or even into orbit. Working is a big word. It's just a tin can with a couple of sputtering engines. Controlling it technically doesn't work. Somehow it does not surprise me. Let's fly. Just a minute. I'm waiting for the force field to shut down, which should be soon.
He's not here. Rietra? He took his men to the ship. They're inside now. You had rather a hard landing. How do you know all this? Well, I heard him talking to them. To you. Uh, didn't he notice I wasn't responding? Yes, he did. He said he'd be back. He expected me to wait here. He's sorely mistaken. Wow. It's impressive. The condor? Yes. Uh, it looked majestic in the pictures. In real life, too. I think I know where we're hitching. It's to be expected that we'll lose communications as soon as you enter the cargo bay. Sure thing. So many tons of steel. Indeed. We'll have to establish a connection using one of the devices on the ship. I'm sure you'll find one in the command bridge. I'll find that radio. No worries.
legs feel really heavy. Give yourself a moment to rest, Doctor. You certainly deserve it. It's one more thing, yes. This is important. I'll be able to confirm it in a while. But so far, everything indicates... What is that, Astrogator? Headquarters were right about the Invincible. It's actually flying here. If I'm reading the message correctly, they'll be in in a few days. They're looking for the missing Commodore. Ah. So that's their marvel of military technology. Rachel wastes no time. Is it attacking already? For now, he's only released a Cyclops, as they call it. The hell is he think? It's floating majestically, three meters above the ground. Ah, what does it look like? And they have no idea of the danger. Must admit that I haven't seen any pictures of the Cyclops. The Alliance tried to keep its existence a secret, so there are a lot of unsubstantiated legends about it. So our mission made no sense from the start. We wanted to outplay the Alliance, but instead we got ourselves into the same trouble. But we still don't know everything. And yes, they're on a rescue mission. For a machine of destruction. Quite inconspicuous, I'd say. Sort of like a massive, heavily armed spinning top. Spinning top? That's unexpected. If only we could get hold of its blueprints. This is hardly the time, Astrogator. Me luck, Astrogator.
must be the medical wing. Surprisingly, everything's still running. What was Rahitra here? to eat soap. Why the flies didn't wipe out all of my memory? Because I fell into a natural stupor. It makes some sense, I guess.
future must have given them something to calm them down. As he did in the hideout. Huh. There should be more drugs around here somewhere. Horrific could be useful. Well, I prefer not to have to use it. could it be? How did you get to the upper deck? The usual way. I took the elevator with a little help from an industrial lift. A lift? Usually we use access cards. But I see that you prefer unconventional solutions. Always.
Antiprotons. Rahitra! Here. Please take the position next to me. Help me. How? Sit down and you'll see. Probes are already in the air. I do have visuals from the Cyclops here, but I can't do everything on my own. Oh, wait. Activity's increasing. They're coming. Are you helping or not? Come on, Yasna. It's about to start. I can't wait any longer. But why, Rahitra? What f Okay, I'm ready. What am I looking at? It'll be... Uh, number five, a long-range one. It sees the entire perimeter. Better switch to a closer one. There's the Cyclops. Great. Force field activation. I confirm. Field active. The cloud's within reach. I'm shooting. The close range is dead. No wonder. It's boiling over there. The field is shrinking. Calm down, Yasna. It will hold. Whoa! Oh, oh, beautiful! It's not a machine, it's the devil himself. I'm telling you! Shit! I'm losing connection. Do you see anything? They're creating a tight formation. A cyclone. Fucking shit! That can't be good, right? What was that? You tell me. Can't you see anything? Probes. The mid-range is dead. How about the long range? Uh, the long range works. The cloud has stopped attacking. The Cyclops is... Huh? What is it doing? What did you see? Yasna! The cloud... one. What? You said... Don't count on the Cyclops anymore. Circus must have gone haywire. It shot down the probes. Now it's probably operating with a new goal. Like all those machines earlier. I, do, I don't understand. How? This is pure madness. Hey, at least we still have the Invincible. Don't mock me. I'm not mocking you, Rahitra. They really are flying here. They'll be here in about... Just hold on for a moment. I'll find out.
Are you there? This is the commander of the IC Dragonfly unit, Astrogator Novik. I'm here, Astrogator. Unfortunately, I don't have good news. The Cyclops got out of control. What do you mean? Just like the other machines. Now, it'll wander around aimlessly. Or even worse. I had a feeling it would end like this. Do you know what Rahitra is planning now? I have no idea. But then I need to talk to him. You, sir? Yes. Can you switch me somehow? Okay, okay. I'm switching you to the bridge. He should be able to hear you now. Done. Please talk. Hello, Condor. This is Astrogator Novik, commander of the IC Dragonfly ship. I repeat, this is Astrogator Novik to the crew of the USCA Condor cruiser. Please come in. <laughs> Could you stop with all these? Rohitra, Engineer Rohitra. Among our crew, I'm the last man standing, so to speak, which I guess makes me commander. <laughs> Who would have thought? In that case, I'm making an official request to join our forces to prevent the danger that threatens both sides. Oh, enough, Novik. That's enough. I agree, officially, and all that jazz. We're already taking steps to eliminate the threat. I'd even say that your crew is working on it pretty damn actively. We stopped playing defense and took the fight to them. The cloud suffered significant losses. As a counterattack, though, it disrupted our communications. <laughs> playing defense sounds a lot better than we're getting our asses kicked. Doctor, not now, please. No, it's true. Fighting against the cloud is exceptionally difficult. But any opponent can be defeated. All it takes is the right tool. Meaning what exactly? Let me remind you that we're dealing with a dispersed entity whose technological prowess is still unknown. And it has so far destabilized every machine sent its way. Even the most specialized ones. That's why I'll keep it simple this time. No electro brains, no memory, only pure energy. You still haven't answered me, Rietra. What? A nuclear weapon? Seriously? Damn right. I won't leave all this unresolved. How many warheads do you have? 54. From 30 kilos to 100 megatons. Oh. That's quite an arsenal. Over the top, I'd say. We really do have enough power. That's an understatement, Doctor. An amount of energy could rip the planet to pieces. I'm not an idiot. I won't send everything at once. I'm preparing eight smaller warheads to start with. And then? We'll see. Are you sure this is a good idea, Rahitra? <sighs> Listen, Yasna, I know how it must look to you. A hot-headed guy from the Alliance who wants to use nukes. But put yourself in my shoes. I have two dozen hours tops of complete situational awareness. I'm taking action here and now based on my best judgment. I don't know what will happen later. Where will I wake up? In what condition? So I'm going to avenge my people before that happens and ensure the safety of those who survived. They all deserve better than this. I know you understand. You're like me. You would do anything for your crew. I understand, yes. Although it's hard to talk about revenge here. We are dealing with creations of necro-evolution. Dead evolution. Or probably non-sentient ones. Taking revenge on the cloud is like... Whipping the ocean for sinking a ship? Exactly. Like Xerxes. That's why I would consider this problem in the category of neutralization. Not vengeance. After all, nothing guarantees the flies will stay on Regis Three If they continue to evolve, Wait a minute, Doctor. Even if they were to master space navigation, wouldn't it take hundreds of thousands of years? Millions of years, even, considering the evolutionary timeline. However, they could threaten humanity much sooner, by sheer chance. Not a chance I'm willing to take. It's not over yet. If we factor in sheer chance, we might as well get killed by a meteor. No, Novik. 
It's not a meteor or an ocean or a storm. They don't hunt or degrade or cripple you mentally. You and Hitler are still reasoning as though we were standing face to face with a thinking opponent. What if these beings are not our enemy at all? Oh, good one. Are you forgetting how many of us they've already killed? I will never forget for Hitler. So I can't help feeling that they operate without any strategic plan. They attack from one incident to another. They're non-sentient, as the doctor put it. So what, they're stupid? And that's why they can't be hostile? It's absolute nonsense. Well, it could be. Yes, sir. What do you think? They're not stupid or hostile, but rather programmed to react to radio waves, to brain waves. How? They're breaking down communications to thwart the exchange of information. So... They see no difference between a man and a machine? They take our brains for transmitters. That's why they're attacking us? Exactly. Wait, what species are you talking about? Dr. Yasin found various traces of conflict, lasting for hundreds of thousands of generations. Both living organisms and mechanical creators of the cloud, as well as other products of dead evolution. The list is quite long. Hang on. Creators? Yes. Millions of years ago, someone must have built primordial mechanisms. Machines could have self-built in successive generations. But something must have created them first. I don't buy it. It's like some robot fables. No, Rachel, these are no fables. We have gathered evidence for all this. How did these machines even get here? Who built them? Our cyberneticist had a hypothesis before we lost consciousness. About the Lyrans. Yes, that one. Lyrans. Lyrans. It does ring a bell. Wasn't there a book about them? The Cravens monograph. According to his notes, before the explosion of Zeta Lyra, the sixth planet of the system was inhabited by intelligent beings. Let's say their scout ship landed here and that a disaster occurred. Some kind of reactor explosion. Chain reaction. Suffice to say, the wreckage that landed on Regis 3 had no living beings on board. Only the machine survived. And then what? They started bashing in each other's tin heads? Doesn't make much sense to me. Machines don't have emotion. They don't argue. First things first. Millions of years ago, some highly advanced race sent machines to Regis 3. And these were specialized homeostatic mechanisms, left with no one to command them. As an engineer, you know well how it is. A robot does what it needs to do, whether it serves someone or not. At first, they probably just repaired themselves or built a home for their dead masters. Until something forced them to change. Exactly. Certain types of predator eat anything that moves. So I'm betting they were attacked by a local fauna. The key was that these machines had the ability to produce others as needed. To combat, say, flying reptiles, they started producing flying machines. That still doesn't explain why they started fighting among themselves. Since they already defeated the living organisms, why keep producing themselves? It makes no sense. What's a guiding principle of a homeostat? Ugh, I don't... Uh, that was a rhetorical question. It's all about survival and changing conditions, even the harshest ones. The further forms of necroevolution were no longer threatened by the local fauna, but they had to find sources of energy and materials from which they could produce replacement parts and offspring. Originally, their descendants were undoubtedly powered by radiant radiation, but on Regis, there are no radioactive elements at all. Ah, uh -huh. sounds familiar. When the energy runs out, you have to wheel and deal. Yes, the default source wasn't available anywhere. So they had to look for an alternative. There was a severe energy crisis and, and a conflict among the machines. Simply put, they fought to survive. 
exist. That's what evolution is all about. About selection. Wait, Doctor. We've established that these beings are mindless. Shouldn't the organisms with the most developed nervous systems win the game of evolution? In this case, instead of a nervous system, there was some kind of electrical one. But the principle remains the same. Uh, not exactly, sir. The most advanced of the mechanisms that landed here derived energy from their own radioactive resources. Simpler devices such as small repair systems could have had solar panels. And in that case, would have had a significant advantage over the others. But the other ones could defend themselves. They could attack. With atomic power. Yes, that's possible. But I see it differently. In necroevolution, the most successful beings were those that excelled in miniaturization above all else. Also, the sedentary creations. The former gave rise to the cloud, which the flies form when necessary, in pursuit of a common interest. Meanwhile, the sedentary ones gave rise to a peculiar species of metallic vegetation. Those structures formed the city. So, it's still functional? No. For some reason, the city lost a fight for survival. And now, there are only rusting remains. Only one form survived. The microbots that conquered the land on Regis Three. So, these flies just... Adapted best to the conditions of this planet. Yes, that's how it works So To summarize some alien race sent advanced robots to Regis 3. Local dinosaur like monsters tried to eat them So the robots produced other robots which produced more and more robots until they fell victim to their own overproduction after a number of iterations and wars for resources, they spat out the murderous cloud, which took over the planet. Indeed. To put it simply... For me, the matter is perfectly clear. It makes no sense to bomb these creatures. I mean, even say it's a greater danger to us than to them. But how else do you imagine defeating the cloud? Well, that's the thing. I don't. It's invincible. Yes, sir, do you agree? Well... What are you saying, Doctor? After a sufficiently powerful explosion, the ocean waters will begin to vaporize. Cloud cover will increase. The albedo will rise. And the resident symbionts won't be able to provide the minimum energy needed for reproduction. So yes, we can destroy the cloud. Ha! I knew it! Along with ourselves. Oh. You don't think we can defeat them and survive? Technically, we'd have to wipe out the entire planet. That's not our goal here, is it? No, it's not. So, you think there's no point trying with smaller charges? We would risk our lives for nothing. So yeah, I am against bombing. We won't help anyone this way. Uh, but what else could we do, if not attack? We can leave this place and never come back. We have a lander. Sorry, but I'm not going anywhere. You on the other hand? I'm surprised you didn't evacuate already. Well, I had to make sure you won't do something you'll deeply regret. Let's drop it, all right? Further discussion is pointless. The charges are almost ready. Rehitra, for fuck's sake, be reasonable! You won't stand down, will you? An escalatory solution won't work. We'll only needlessly draw the cloud's attention. And I won't have you endanger my subordinates. Oh, good one. I wasn't the one who sent her to the surface of this shit all over the planet. Yes, yes, I admit. We've all made mistakes. We place too much trust in our blasters and sensors and our protective fields. Now we're suffering the consequences. However, we must be aware that we are facing a problem that renders our ambitions irrelevant. What ambitions are you raving about now? Maybe I can't come up with a million smart-sounding arguments, but I know it's the right move. Now, give me a second. I have to stop arguing. Rehitra? Rehitra, over. 
He won't answer you, sir. Not anymore. Oh. Did you neutralize him? I put him to sleep. It's cruel, I know. He will forget everything. All over again. No, yes, no, you did the right thing. He wasn't listening to reason. But have blown everything up. Most likely along with the both of you. You actually saved his life. Now I hope the Invincibles crew thinks the same. The Invincible? Are you saying that... Yes, I'm staying on Regis 3. Yes, sir. You should fly away, Astrogator. Warn everyone from the Commonwealth. And I'll warn those who come here. So, all we can do now is... Yes, indeed, Doctor. Yes, sir. It was truly an honor. <laughs> I'm having a hard time finding the right words. I have one last request. I'm listening. I'd like Koval and Gorski to remember me, even just from your stories. Of course. I'll let everyone know what you did for them. No, no. I don't care about gratitude. I just want them to know who I was. I am. Right. I will try to do justice in capturing your extraordinary character. Although I must admit, it's not an easy assignment. <laughs> As always. I'm not making anything easier for you, Novik. <laughs> That's always yes, sir. Have a safe journey. Thank you, and uh, take care. Over and out. Finally. It's them. Switching through the channels. To all units in the perimeter, this is the Chief Navigator of the USCA Invincible Cruiser. We're preparing to land on Regis 3. Call code Sierra Alpha Romeo. Estimated time of approach, T minus 20. Searching for me. To all units in the perimeter, this is the Chief Navigator of the USCA Invincible Cruiser. Please respond. Oh, they could slow it down a little. Hmm, all right. Seems no one is answering here. I'll try another channel.